All right, shut up. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. So, let's talk about. Let's talk about. Let's talk about JavaScript iteration. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to iterate through arrays and objects with four. And write functions. Seems like it's unrelated. Not in JavaScript land. Um, uh oh, uh oh. Trouble in paradise. I'm working on it. Sorry, epileptics. All right, sweet. So uh, for this first one, for this first one, uh, we're going to deal with for loops. JavaScript actually has a couple different kinds of for loops. Um, but let's start with uh, old standby. You probably haven't done this since um, uh, pre-work, but for loops are a feature in almost every language. How do they work? Somebody tell me. Yeah, Gage. You said statement condition. It's not like you can put any statement in there, but there's a particular kind of statement we tend to prefer. Yeah, you set your variable. There's a good vocab word for that. Anybody know what it is? Instantiate. Instantiate? I like it. We'll call it our, our initialization. So we're going to initialize. And then, Gage, what was the second one? The condition. And then, anybody, what's the last one? Yep. Uh, I like iteration because you can go anyway. There's four parts to this for loop. Three, sorry. All right, so how are we getting started? What sorts of things do we need to set up? So generally speaking, there's some kind of counter that we're initializing to zero or something like that. The condition. We check that if it's true or truthy. We do the uh, body of the uh, loop. Otherwise, we're done. And then this, once this is completed, what thing changes? Four parts to a for loop. So a lot of the time we'll write that something like var or I guess we're Start with ES6. Let i equal zero. That's our initialization. Our condition is probably something like while i is less than some array dot length. And then at the end of every one, we make i a little bit bigger. So we have an array with three items in it. i is zero. Is i less than, array dot length is three. Is zero less than three? Well, yes it is. So we do the body of the function. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Cool. Now i is one. Is one less than three? Well, yeah, uh, yes it is. So we do the body of the function. Make it two. Is two less than three? Well, yes, it is. So we do the body of the function. We iterate this. Now it's three. Is three less than three? Too bad, so sad. So we move on. That means that whatever is in here is going to go three times. And that's like, that's a, one of our Swiss Army knife tools for looping through stuff. So what I'd like you to do right now is open up your browser. Or actually, let's see. I'm trying to think of how I want you to do this. We're going to do this with just a JavaScript file to start with. And I want you to make an array 
with three things in it. And I want you to for loop through this and print each of those things. So if you do this right, it should go one, two, three. And the way you're going to run it, is you're going to put it in JavaScript file, and then in your command line, you'll type node, and then the name of the file. For example, if I touch app.js, and I open up app.js, and I console.log hi, and I node app.js, it says hi. I want you to write a for loop that says three things from an array. Go. Throw up a hand if you get stuck.
Goal was to take in something like this, poop out something like this. So a lot of you got a lot of you got the for loop. A lot of you got the for loop part right, the header, but you were console logging just the array. So if we do that, that works. You can say cool array, and it'll print out the array three times, like so. We go into the app.js file. I say I have an array, and it's one, two, three. Neat. And I type four. Let i equal zero i is less than array.length and then we iterate through it when we're done and I console.log array what will happen if I run this prints the entire array three times fine but if I want the individual thing so it goes one two three I want to print out what the index is. And hey, how convenient. It starts at zero, we do the zero. And then when this increments, it becomes one. And now we're printing index one. Then it increments and it's two. We print out index two. Ah, interesting. So, one, two, three. This is the case in almost every language. That there's, at a minimum, you can probably do something like this to work with an array. And so this header makes it, uh, this condition is starting here and incrementing every time. That makes it so we go through this the same number of times as there are elements in the array. And then by using that as the index, that gives us a particular thing. Pretty cool. And we can also do any of our other like stupid programming tricks. Like if array at i equals 2, then print it out. And now if I do this, I'm only going to print out two, any of that kind of stuff. That's our low level four operations. Questions about any of that? Yeah, Gage. So you don't actually need to write the function, like write a, like to put that in a function? On nope. The you can put it in the middle of nowhere. Now we can put it in a function. I can say function print two, and then throw all that stuff in there. That works. I need to invoke it now, like that, but works the same way. And I can comment out that if, and print all of them. Other questions about this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, like, in Ooh, good question. What's the difference between triple equals, double equals? Because they are slightly different. I'm asking this question because I don't think it's pretty easy to do. Uh, yes, that's part of it. Let's like unpack that. It's Susie versus true. Um, pretty sure the third one looks for like the same type of data. Correct. So is it the same value and is it the same type? So if I compare that, that works. To the string and to the number are the same value, but they're two different data types. If I do that, oops, doesn't pass, not true. Not the same data type, even though they're the same value. Generally speaking, 
rely on three. Um, you'll see a lot of people who think that like the double equals in JavaScript was a language mistake, should be ripped out of the language. There's absolutely no good use case for a two equals comparison. Because here's the other thing about two equals comparisons, the order matters. There's all kinds of like weird little bugs with it where the same thing, if you put it on the other side of the equals, like gives you the opposite answer. Um, with a lot of those kinds of things, my take on that is like, or just learn how it works. Um, but uh, it is, you're never gonna be in bad shape doing a triple equals. So if you want a rule, that's the rule. Cool, other questions so far? Yeah. Sure, um, anything that comes in from a form is always a string. And so if you're typing something out um, and you need to compare that, for example, to an ID, IDs are generally numbers. So if you wanna compare those, you can double equals them and go, I don't give a shit what data type it is. Is it the same ID? Um, otherwise, what you would do is have your uh, number and your string and you'd coerce the string into a number. It's like percent or something like that. Good question. What else? Cool. Next thing. That's not the only for loop out there. There's two more I want you to be familiar with. Uh, they are for in and for of. And I'd like you to read the MDN documentation on them right now for a couple minutes. For in and for of. Excellent, cool. So uh, turn and talk to a neighbor about what you found. Two, 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 two.
So, who can give me a tight difference between for in and for of? Yeah. Yeah, the question is for int, it would be now the index.await. Mm -hmm. For of, it would be now the element.await. Yes. So, if we're doing arrays, for in gives us all the indexes. For of gives us all the values. What about for objects? Um, for in gives the uh, properties of the objects. Yep. And for of gives the key. Hmm? Key for in is keys, yes. for of is values. Let's prove it. So if I do. Keep that same array, and I do for uh, const um, index of array. Or sorry, const index in array. And I console log index. I should get what? Zero one two. Let's see. Zero, one, two. If I do of, I should get what? One, two, three. Let's see if it works. Shoot. Whoop! It's not called index anymore. One, two, three. Cool. So the extra cool thing about that is what if this is an object instead? I've got A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. Now I can say key in object. And what am I going to get? A, B, C. Cool. Or I can do value of object. And I get one, two, three. Deep. What? Is it not iteratable? Should be. Object is not iterable. Dagio. Don't you have um, the comma? That's fine. You can do trailing commas. Shoot. Doesn't want me to do that. All right, that's fair. So let's say for of with objects doesn't work. I can't just get the values. Anybody know how I could use that one we were using before? How can I use that to do the same thing? Object then key with brackets. Object key. See if it works. One, two, three. Easy as easy as a B C. What's up, Gage? Yeah. So, let's rewrite it this way. Let's 
saying I want to go over every key in the object. So that's going to do it three times, A, B, and C. And I'm saying, all right, first time around, I got A. I want to take this object and I want you to give me whatever's at A, which is the value. And then I log it. I could have also done that as const value equals object dot A or B or C. The problem is that I can't do something like key because then it's going to look for something called key. So if it's variable, we use the brackets instead. Yeah? Is the uh, difference between a constant and a let a constant can be changed by like the code that's on the thing? Const can't be reassigned. Mm -hmm. So I can't do const value and then value equals anything else. It'll throw an error. Okay. I can do that. If I use let. Why is why do you prefer let over var now? Why is that like a new thing? Um, because people who came from other languages like block scoped variables, because that's way more common. Um, for example, let and const any variable declared in here can't escape these brackets or these braces. I mean, um, whereas var. Like, that exists down there also. Other questions so far? Yeah. Uh, when you use const over let? Sure. Uh, the general consensus is default to const unless you have to use let. And it's for the exact same reason that um, you did readers in Ruby by default instead of just making everything an adder. Or the reason that like you kind of want to uh, prefer private methods in Ruby over just making everything public. If this is getting reassigned uh, right now and I don't want it to, it throws an error. I find out about it. I can trace down the bug. If I make that a let and it's getting assigned and I don't want it to, it's not going to say shit because I let it. And it's a lot easier to go, oh, no, 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 it's totally fine. That can be reassigned and change that to a let, then not get an error, not know that something was getting reassigned, and then clamp it down to a const. So prefer const unless it has to be reassigned, then make it a let. That also helps your code be more descriptive. If I see something is declared as a let, I'm looking to see where it's being reassigned, somewhere else in the app. Other questions so far? Cool, let's do some bark wire. So what I want you to do is I have I have some dogs and well, let's see how do I want to do this yeah Bixby arfs Mesa woofs and Ted Gers. So I want you to iterate through dogs with four in and make each of the dogs say their thing. Go.
OK, so if I for const dog in dogs, and maybe I make a sound that's equal to, uh, oops, dogs at dog and console log it. Too many. Arf! Woof! Arf. Neat. That's it. So, like the dog part, like the cons dog, that's kind of like you putting something in like double pipes, kind of? Putting something in double pipes. Like you, you oh, uh, the, like the blocks and stuff? Not quite. Um, you don't really have yes. what dog is. Correct. Yeah, so we can do D and D, and it works the same way. Okay. Correct. Questions about this? I have a question that's down to the same level. Mm -hmm. um, semicolon? Optional. Okay. Um, I'm going to say don't worry too hard about them. There are three cases where we call ASI or automatic semicolon insertion will ruin you. Um, you will probably never do them. Um, it has to do with like starting something on, like using weird uh, formatting with line breaks and stuff. Um, it can uh, sort of trick the browser compiler into thinking something's done when it's not. So semicolons help with that. I'm actually like a big fan of semicolons, but the entire rest of the JavaScript community is not. So I've given up the fucking fight, <laughs> um, but I will not be angry if I see semicolons in your code. Is that new? Did there used to be? No, it's always been semicolon, oh, ASI. <laughs> in JavaScript. Other languages, even languages that look almost identical, like Java, um, required. Most languages use semicolons, C, C++, require you to use them. Always optional in JavaScript. So if we did semicolons on that, we put them here, here, and here. The thing I like about semicolons is, uh, contrary to popular belief, people don't read code. People scan code. You're looking at code for a particular reason, and so you're trying to like uh, identify where something is. Semicolons, I think, make it really easy to scan for statements. These are things that are being executed. And so I can go, OK, well, this is a control structure, so it doesn't have a semicolon. Um, these are parts of this, so they're not a statement. They're an expression. All right, cool. That is the actual statement being executed, and it's assign this to this. Um, so I think that's handy. The entire JavaScript world disagreed with me. And so they are wildly unpopular in JS. Cool. Other questions? Neat. Let's take a look at object ball. Is it? There we go. Does it have a solution? Did it push up a solution? Shit. Did it, was it all inlined? Zero, zero object ball. Where's zero, zero object ball? Did it seriously not get pushed up? Oh, I guess that would make sense. All right, never mind. Let's not do object ball. Um, well, fuck it. 
We can we can start it at least. All right, so we're trying to build objects. Top level of the object has two keys, home and away. So talk me through this. Um, actually, let's let's take turns on this. Uh, we'll do a whip around. Um, Priscilla, how am I starting? First function you will define is called game object. All right, how do I start with this? Okay. Okay. Like that. You missing anything? Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. And then contains and returns an object. Damon, how am I going to start with that? Huh. No. <laughs> Other Damon. <laughs> White Damon. Ben, what's next? Um, we have, we have um, hold and away two buttons for that. Okay. And are those objects or arrays? Um, that is objects. Good. Oh, also, Ben, I mentioned this earlier. Um, JavaScript is pretty friendly with what we call trailing commas. Uh, not every language is, but if you're making a list of things, you can have a trailing comma even if there's nothing after it, which can be real nice because then you just don't have to keep track of that, and you can reorder stuff without having to like get rid of semicolon or get rid of commas and add them and that sort of stuff. Trailing commas, what that's called. Um, okay, and then let's see, Aaron. What am I doing next? So uh, create the object for home and away, mm -hmm. which highlights that it's obvious that it should be the object of the um, um, some keys. Mm -hmm. uh, team name always has a zero. Good. Team name. And team name is a what? A string. Okay. And colors is a Okay, so colors is an array of strings, and okay, cool. And then we're doing the same thing down here, and then the players key. Um, let's see, Arlene. Oh, sorry. Uh, question. So, super good question. This and this are identical. They're the exact same thing. And unlike in Ruby, we don't need to like use different syntax when we want to do that. Great question. Um, Arlene. Yep. Okay. Brooklyn Nets, Charlotte Hornets. Okay, very nice. And then, uh, let's see, Chris, what am I doing next? Okay. Turquoise and purple. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, neat. Um, and let's see, Katie. What should I do next? Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. Players is we already have a player sheet, is that right? Yes. According to Nalpe. Mm -hmm. So then in the object I'm sorry, you'll have a player within that each player will be a key okay. tied to another object. Okay. Cool. Do you want the all Yeah, give me a help me format a player. Okay, um, and that, that needs to be in a string. Why? Space. If I do that, if I do that, it's going to stop at Allen and go, Wait, wait, hang on, what are we doing? So I can have all kinds of goofy ass characters if it's wrapped in quotes. That's when you use that. All right, so I've got Alan Anderson, and then uh, Katie, what uh, keys am I putting in here? Number. Number, and that is a. Uh, what, uh, what the value is? Uh, data type. What data type is number? Uh, nope. <coughs> Looks like a number, not a string. I see. Okay, sorry. I got confused. Okay. Uh, yes. Sure. All right, and then what else? Two. Which is? 16. Okay. Uh, no, no. Yeah, what was his uh, number? Zero. Okay. And then? And then three down, twelve. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's what a player looks like. Um, I'm going to say let's. Copy this down to the other one, and a Hornets player is Javedrian. And then, uh, let's see, um, Arena, can you give me Jeff Adrian's stats real quick? Okay. 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 Awesome. So we got a uh, data structure we can work with now. now. Let's get into the uh, let's get into the thing. So cat, we're gonna be building all these things. Here's how we debug. Which I'll, I know you guys asked about this morning, so we can demo that. Accessing keys and objects, iterating, womp womp womp. All right, here we go. Build a function num points scored that takes in an argument of a player's name, returns the number of points scored for that player. Cat, tell me uh, at least get started on this one. Okay. Okay. What's it called? Good. And we care about um, casing. Uh, JavaScript is case sensitive. Not every language is, but this one is. Uh, okay. And then. If it takes in the argument, can you put name there? Yep. Now, what we can't do is that thing that we were doing in Ruby all the time, where we would do that. That doesn't work in JavaScript. Have to, have to use the parentheses. Okay, then what? Curlies. curlies. Have to, have to, have to use the curlies. Not optional. Okay, now what? Sources. 
Okay. And all right, so I got the four started. Lizzie, what am I doing next? Um. I'm take in a player's name and then get their points. You absolutely can do that. So, all right, we make another function. What do you want to call it? All players. All players. Cool. And uh, how are we going to start all players? Um, player's name is empty on the list Okay. That is an empty object. What am I doing in here? Cool. Now what? Um, let's have another variable that's just a straight game object. So we can put it elsewhere. Okay. Game object. And how do I get that? Um, you just you would follow your function game object with all variables. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, in the game object function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good man. So I have this teams variable here that we started, but what's wrong with that? There's no return. So we can do two things. We can return teams. Come on, man. We can return teams, or what else could we do? you goddamn right. We can just do that. Either way is fine. I tend to prefer this because there's only two hard things in programming. Cache invalidation and naming things. And off by one errors. Ha 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 ha. But names are legitimately very difficult to come up with. Um, a lot of names are just lies waiting to happen. Um, and so if we can get away with not having to come up with them in the first place, that helps. That's a good example of that. All right, so we're returning it now. Um, Lizzie, keep going. Oh. <laughs> um, so you could use one of those four ends. Okay. To the All right. And then Martin, how am I going to do that? Uh, four. Put, put game object in where? Uh, in, the parentheses. in the parentheses, okay. What else am I putting in the parentheses? Think about the syntax of a for in. Somebody help Martin out. Game object does go in there. Arena, what you got? Hmm? Okay, so for in does what? Is that key or value? Key? Okay, so what's the highest level key? Yeah, sure, I like that. All right, so Martin, what am I doing? Uh, so you put in the key and the location. The location. And since we're making a variable there, we need to give it a scope declaration. So what should we use? Const. Const, sure. And then Martin, we're missing one last thing that makes this work. Uh, the yeah. Okay, so location is going to be, this is going to iterate how many times? Twice. Good. First time location is going to be home, second time location is going to be away. Um, Joe, what am I doing next? Um, 
Okay. To what? Players. Okay. What's it going to be equal to? Player? Mm, you're in the ballpark. Location. So if I put location in here, just like in Ruby, that's going to evaluate to uh, most percent. This object right here. Same thing. So then, finish your train of thought. You were on the right one. I've got that object. What part of that object do I want? Right? So how do I get players? I've got two different ways I can do it. Somebody help Joe out. Yeah, Gage. Yep. Okay. Like that? Uh oh. What's the trouble with that? Not a name conflict. That's part of it. Like, I think that's just sloppy, but that's not the real problem. <laughs> We're circling around it. What is this? It's certainly not players. It will be this eventually, but needs to be a string. This is looking for a variable named players. If I want to get the key named players, I got to do that. Or what's the other way I could do that? Dot players. Dot players. If it's going to be the same thing every time, the dot notation is easier to read. OK, so this gives me an array of players. That's pretty badass. So uh, Gage. Well, we're trying to get all players. And then we've got the, uh, so as our strategy is we're going to uh, try to get a list of all the players in an object. We have this empty object up here that we're going to store them in. We successfully have uh, all the players for each team, but we need to do something with them to kind of like collect them. Well, yeah, Katie. Uh, player list dot put. Sure. Players. Now, if I do player list dot push, it's going to freak out on me. Why? What is push for? Arrays. Arrays. And what's player list? An object. An object. Object doesn't have push. You got the right idea, though. I need to populate player list with all these players. Yeah, Ben. Uh, Ooh, interesting. Okay. Uh, object dot keys and then give it players. So let's take a look at what players is first. Okay, players is an object. What does object.keys do? Gives me all the keys as an array. All right. We gotta come up with a strategy here though. There's a few different ways we could do this. I'm gonna say, let's start with this. We have this empty object and for every single player we need to go Cool. This player's name equals their object. This player's name equals their object. This player's name 
equals their object. And just kind of keeping track of all of that inside of player list. So if I'm saying for each player, that should be like your English language cue for a what? You're in the ballpark. Yes, I'm going to have to iterate for each player in this fine collection of players that I have. How do I, how do, I do that? Why, yes, I can. Cat, how do I do that? <laughs> No good deed goes unpunished. Four. Okay. <laughs> For what? So we can use in or of. What are we iterating through? Are we? What's the name of the thing that we're going to iterate through? Players, okay? So players is an object. So what do we think is the right tool for that? For in or for of? For in, all right. So um, Kat, how am I writing the header for this one with for in? Um, Called? Players. Mm, I already have players. Player, and then in players. Hey, and that kind of reads like like English, right? For player and players. All right, cool. Uh, let's see, Andrew. What am I doing now? Now I've got access to each individual player. Do we want it in that players list console up there? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. no. The equivalent to shovel would be push, but both of those are for arrays. Yeah. That's not an array. We're trying to set key as the player's name, and then its value is their player object. So how do I do that? Object.keys. Object.keys is a method that returns all the keys of an object. <coughs> oh, I can't push because push is for arrays. Katie. Uh, player, player, player? player what? This player's an object. Oh shit, actually we made this harder than I thought we did. Um, so, hang on, let me think about how I want to No, actually, that works. No, player is the name. I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. And then players at player is going to be their object. All right. Player so. Player <laughs> you got it. Players. Yes. Is that it? Nope. Keep going. <laughs> but it's start. Right start. <laughs> players. What? Dot hmm? <laughs> Square bracket. Player. Okay. So, uh, Cody, help us break this down. We did a whole bunch of shit in here. <laughs> okay, so inside the functional players, are you talking about the. Yeah, from, from here. Okay, so we're creating the constant player that's the empty object. Yes. So we have some way to put that. Yes. Well, let's uh, clean up the language on that. We're not just referencing that function. We are we're calling it, and its value is that data. Okay, keep going. Okay, and then we're looping through so for uh, each location mm -hmm. to an object. Yep. Um, and then we're assigning what the player is. For that location. Okay. 
So this is Holmes players right now. And what, what is player in this situation? Yep. And most specifically, since this is an object and we're using in, not of, this is giving us the, the key, which in the case of the player's object is what? Ooh, Ben had it. What is it? The key for uh, everything in the player's object is their name. Okay, so that ends up being Alan Iverson or whatever. Uh, and then, Cody, take us home. Yes. So player list starts as an empty object saying, hey, uh, why don't you make a key called Allen Iverson and make it equal to all the players on the home team, the one named Allen Iverson, whatever that evaluates to. Save that there. Nested loops. Go through each location, get their players. For every one of the players, we add them to this player list. Yeah? So that would go through the away team as well? Exactly, because that's the outer loop. This is home and away. This is every player. So if we drew that out, we would have. Um, Two loops for home and away. And for each one of those, all of their players. Loops on loops on loops, yo. First outer iteration, second outer iteration. In the first uh, outer iteration, inner iteration. Second loop, inner iteration. And each one of those is a player. Yeah? So if there were more players in each home and away, yep. when it iterates through, would it get all the home players first and then it would get the away players next? Yep, correct. Because when we start this loop, when we hit here, zoop, 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 we're still in the outer loop, that first iteration of it. And then we finish that when we go to the next one. We hit that, all their players. And we end up building that player list. Cool. So let's see, Mohammed. We're assuming right now that this works. We'll check that in a sec. How do I use this cool all players function that we made to get the number of points scored for a player? Okay. So let's say I just want to get a list of all the players now that I have this last function. Ooh, actually, there's one thing we have left to do in this function. What is it? Got to return what? Player list. Very nice. Okay. And uh, so, Muhammad, that's going to return all of the players when I invoke it. So what should I do? Love it. Or all players. Okay, so that gives me every player back as an object where their names are keys. So how do I get the right player? How do I 
So I'm saving it in this variable here. How do I get that player's object back? I have, I've been given their name. What do I do? So it's just going to, it's also going to give me that way in this. I'm going to get a string called Allen Iverson. Cool. That gives me the correct player. How do I get their points? Oop, but if I do that, it's going to look for a variable called points. So I can put quotes around it, and that works. Or I could do what? Dot points. Same thing. And then all I need to do at this point is return it. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to console.log num points scored. And I'll grab Alan Anderson. I want a truth. I will probably get an error. Yep. All players is not defined. Oops, it's probably because it does not want me to set that as a const also. Okay. Another error? Yep. Game object is not defined. Right, because I probably can't do that same thing. So I'm going to give that a different name. I'm going to call it game. Replace that. All right. 22 points. Did Alan Anderson score 22 points? Yeah. You goddamn right he did. Pew. <laughs> so that is a very manual way to do iteration. However, I will say, even though I'm about to show you a much faster way to do this, that probably maps a little bit closer to how we did this in Ruby. I have heard many interviewers weep with disappointment, gnashing their teeth, that people don't know how to do fucking for loops. This is like super fundamental stuff. Um, I will also say that like, you'll almost never see me write a for loop um, because I think we have better options. Any guesses what our better options are? While loops? No, certainly not a while. <laughs> Map, reduce, filter, that's the JavaScript version of select. Find, we almost always have a better tool for that. It's the same ones that we had in Ruby. So like, if I was trying to iterate through something, I could do, Keep that there. If I'm trying to iterate through game, I could do something like um, object.keys game, and that gives me an array of the keys. And then for each one of those, I could do something like for each. And uh, for each location, and then just like we had blocks in Ruby, there's a similar kind of a thing in JavaScript. It's actually way more powerful in JavaScript. Uh, I can say, all right, cool, for each location, I want to get game. I can do all this stuff. And then over here, instead of the for in, I can say object.keys players for each and player and then something like that. That's a little bit more Ruby-esque. And even more so, the best way to do this of all would be to reduce into the player list. But you'd probably end up doing something kind of similar. 
For right now, iterating over objects, I'd get comfortable with this. The other stuff will come, but if you can do that, you can do anything. Questions? Going once. Nobody has any questions. Yeah, Gage. Yeah. Sure. So another way I could have written that same thing is const matching player and then done matching player dot points. That's the same thing. It's getting that value. And one of the coolest things about JavaScript is um, a thing called referential transparency that we'll talk about in mod 3 a little bit. Um, but the TLDR on it is since player's name is equal to that player, well, I can do anything with that than I could with matching player. So including getting its points. And if that thing was an object, I could get some other value off of it. And if that had some function off of it, I could do that. And then if that returned something that was an array, I could get its index. We could chain all these things together. It's my favorite part of JavaScript. But yeah, we can either do an intermediary variable, and that's completely fine, or we can do that. We could even do all players like that. And I'll also say, I'm, I think I mentioned this to you early on, in Ruby, really common to have little placeholder variables for each step of it. In JavaScript, way more common to chain everything together. Almost to a fault. Other questions? Cool, smoke them if you got them. Damon's up next. <laughs>